doesn't care about that. Let's cut the crap. Just get down to it. I know for me, if I'm watching a movie with my wife and I'm on my phone in the meantime watching reels, I'm watching entrepreneurs talk about different things that they've done to help them succeed. That is engaging to me. And so while most people, let's say, who are dealing with another kind of investor who like are maybe passive about it, they can talk about local trendy spots, whatever it is. You don't have to do that. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Real Marketer Podcast. Every week, I coach a new realtor to help them find their next big opportunity to scale their business by leveraging Inabox's three-part scale engine framework. What does this framework provide? A brand that sells, systems and automations that'll help you accomplish more with less energy, and lead generation strategies that are built to scale. Each week, we leverage the scale engine framework to guide the conversation and provide practical, actionable advice. Our goal at Inabox and the Real Marketer Podcast is to help realtors scale their business and achieve phenomenal success in their careers. So whether you're just starting out or you've been in the industry for years, you'll find value in these coaching sessions. Join us every week as we speak with realtors from all over the country and help them take their careers to the next level. And today we are joined by Carly. Carly, how are you doing today? Good. Happy to be here. I appreciate you coming on the show. As I say, almost every single time, there's a certain vulnerability that's required a comfort with that vulnerability because we don't pull any punches. I'm going to be asking tough questions, transaction history, whatever, all of that stuff. And, and it's not always easy for people to open up. So are you ready to get started? Absolutely. Okay. So first off, I'm going to let you kind of answer this question and lead the beginning of the conversation however you want. Give us a 30,000 foot overview. Who is Carly? Um, I am a 27-year-old realtor. I just moved down to Orange County from Vegas after six years there. I have been in real estate for going on four years now. Um, you know, if California real estate division could get their shit together, we would have a license number already. <laughs> so you've been in real estate for six years now. and Four you said you years now. Sorry? Four years now. Four years. Okay, fine. Yeah. So four years in real estate and you're just starting out in a brand new market. Absolutely. Okay. So <laughs> I'm not a fortune teller, but I already anticipate where this conversation is going to be going. Yep. Um, what does your network or database look like in Orange County? Uh, right now we are starting from scratch, you know, definitely doing a lot of cold calling, meeting strangers. Um, I know a couple people from growing up here, but not any, not worth anything. Definitely looking at new strategies to help grow that. Okay. So you say cold calling, meeting strangers. What does that your process look like for both of those things? Right now, um, we do about three hours of cold calling a day. I am on a real estate team with Keller Williams Beverly Hills. And so we are very structured in that sense. And then as far as meeting people, you know, I went door to door when I first moved down here, got to know the neighborhood, meet some people that way. And I heavily focus on working with investors. So a lot of networking events that are hosted, you know, in my area. Okay. So heavy focus on investors and, and re remind me, I know you said you just moved there. Like what's the time frame? like a month ago? Uh, three months now going on three months. Okay. So the idea basically moving forward is in a brand new market with a heavy focus on investors, how do you start from scratch? And you said that you want to primarily focus on investors. You said heavily, right? Yes. That's much easier, less emotion works better for me. <laughs> easier, less emotion. Okay. And how is the market over there in Orange County from an investor's perspective? So in comparison to previous markets that I've been into, you know, California is very lucrative. There's always people moving in and out. So from an investor's standpoint, you know, the rents are outrageous in comparison to what you could get a mortgage for. So a lot of people are walking into income producing properties without having to do too much of the legwork that some other markets would require. Right. So there's a more of a fast, fast track to cash option. Yeah. Okay, fine. So that's probably something I'm assuming that is a big misconception that you have to deal with is that California is really expensive. Therefore, it, it is bad for investors, which is absolutely not true. Okay, fine. And then obviously each location will have its own benefits, but the benefit of California is that it's just kind of immediate. You can hit the ground running. Correct. Okay. So you're open to cold calling. You're already calling for three hours a day. That's absolutely massive. And it makes your life of making money a lot easier. Um, 
who are you cold calling? Are you following a script? What does that look like? Right now we're doing expired. Um, personally, I am not very good at following a script. I, I try to stay within the general guidelines of a script, but at this point I can't say that I'm following it word for word like some other people that I listen to. Okay. I'm actually not into scripts either as much as I'm into frameworks. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. I work the same way. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So let's look at it from a framework perspective then. So I have no problem with you following a framework instead of a script. What does that framework look like then? So generally my first question, instead of asking if they're still looking to sell, you know, going through the whole expired, because most sellers, they know their listing was expired. They were there for it. So my general approach is, are you still interested in receiving an offer and what kind of offer would make you willing to sell your home? And it's more so about bringing value and not wasting any time. You know, they understand the general process once the home is listed and how that worked. And so my job is to bring them something tangible that they can realistically wrap their heads around what kind of market they're looking at versus just putting it on the market be it overpriced, which is generally why homes don't sell, you know, giving them some sort of structure and an idea on what is realistic when listing your home. So how does that conversation go? Like I can, I can imagine, let's say if I've already been jaded before and you're going to say, and I, and I, I actually love the approach, just like simple, no BS, just listen, are you still interested in an offer? If you, if it, if it was right, well, what does that look like? I don't know. I'm kind of asking you right now. Like if I give you a blank check, what number would you put there? I like that approach. What's their response to it? So generally I try to avoid the price conversation altogether. You know, when I work on structuring an offer, it's focusing more on what their goals were when they were moving. So, you know, it would be something along the lines of, Hey, are you still interested in receiving an offer? You know, your home was previously listed. Why do you think that it didn't sell? What is important to you outside of price? Where were you looking to move? Are there things that you need? Like, is a credit important to you? Are you just looking to get cash fast? You know, there's different different scenarios that can help sellers that sometimes they don't think about when listing a home. You know, they set a price and they're just so focused on that price when in reality, that might be the least important thing to them. That's actually a wonderful insight. I think so many people, unfortunately, think that sellers are one track minded. All that they care about is price. And to prove that that's not the case, like how many times will you as a realtor pay another agency or a brokerage more money per month because they have other features that other people don't or because they have a better community or because they like their why, their mission. And everybody's so obsessed with price. And it's, I'm not sure exactly if it's a projection and I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I love the approach that you're inquiring a little bit deeper. Like what's the emotional reason that you're kind of like, maybe you want to move closer to your grandkids or something like that. Like that's a big thing to know. And okay. So, so how does the, how do they respond to these questions? And generally speaking on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the most one being the least, how hostile are they to you typically? So in the initial call, you know, everybody's received about 100 phone calls as soon as their listing was expired. Um, so in the beginning of the phone call, it's very much people don't want to give you the time of day. And I always preface it like, look, you have you're going to be in the same position after five minutes of talking to me. So just let's just get through these questions. And then if it works, it works. If it doesn't, you know, I'll move on to the next one. But I, I try and make it, you know, I'm not looking to sell you anything. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what the strategy was, why it didn't work for you. And if there's some changes that I can make that benefit you, great. If not, you know, you're in the same boat. Right. That I assume that they would be pretty receptive to that. They are. Yeah, it, it is a different approach. And it's it's usually the whole thing is like, I don't know. Everyone's trying to pretend to be like a knight in shining armor. Like, I don't want anything from you. I just want to be your friend. How you doing today, sir? It's a beautiful sunny day outside. Like, <laughs> God, let me go on with my life, man. I'm watching a movie here. <laughs> you know. And actually, like that's why people are so receptive, just because the approach is different and it is more realistic. And what I've learned is that people like working with me because it's a more honest approach. You know, as yeah. you just said, as much as I would love to build a relationship with you, I'm not going to be your best friend. <laughs> 
Yeah. And I'm not trying to be, you know, you need somebody for a job and I'm trying to prove why I can get that job done and we can all benefit from that. That's, that just is what it is. I saw an ad yesterday on a bus stop and it was like for an insurance company. And it was the, it was a picture of somebody holding up a picture of somebody else. And it had like, we missed you or something like that. And it was like, we're going to really love your insurance agent, something like that. And I said, I was driving my wife. I said, that's a disconnect right there. Like they think that people want to be friends with their insurance agents. Like they don't care to be friends with you. Like it'd be nice, I guess, afterwards. I'm not going into it being like, I need a friend. Yeah, like, I'm going to be best friends with my insurance agent. I couldn't even tell you my insurance agent's name, to be quite honest with you. Yeah. I feel like a better ad would be something like, let's get this over with. Like a quick phone right. call. I, I want to be done with this as much as you do. Yeah. Something like that. I feel like that. Yeah, I don't want to be here. Let's figure it out. Okay. So I, I get this. I get this. Okay, fine. So we've got that calling expireds going on. So that seems like it is, it, is it working for you? So far it is. Yeah. It seems like it would be. Okay, fine. Been here a couple of months and have a couple escrows and two listings. So in that aspect, it is working. There you go. It just obviously requires consistency. So anybody Absolutely. listening to this being like, I don't understand. I cold call for 30 minutes that one day and I'm still broke. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so three hours a day cold calling expired. You got your process dialed in there. So let's look at the next opportunity. Um, I'm assuming building an audience and building your own authority as somebody who can speak on investing in financial security, financial freedom, financial independence, and starting to build your own network and community. Is that sort of an avenue that you'd like to approach? Absolutely, which is why I'm on your podcast now. Okay. So you made my job really easy then. We know exactly what we're trying to accomplish. I don't, I don't have to dig for the opportunity. We know exactly what we're trying to accomplish, which is building your own authority in a very specific space. Okay. So I'm actually going to follow basically step-by-step step the scale engine framework for the first part of brand and then for a little part of scale, which is the first step and then the third step. So brand is identity, messaging, and marketing. And a lot of the time people think branding is basically just a website and a logo. And it's the first part of branding, but it's like probably the most insignificant. Absolutely. Messaging is where it really, really becomes awesome because so many people are trying to promote everything to everyone and it doesn't work like that. So let's dig into the individual that you're trying to attract by being this authority. Talk to me a little bit about the ideal client that you'd like to bring in. You know, my ideal client would be somebody that kind of matches me in personality. You know, I don't enjoy sending. I, I've noticed in my market with people that say they're investor friendly, you know, they pick these investors and they send them every detail without knowing what the numbers are, without even recognizing if it's a good deal or not. So ideally, I appreciate people that are very upfront in what they want, very decisive, quick to move. Like when you see that something is a good deal, you're ready to jump on it. And, you know, being able to have that kind of trust is important because you need to trust me to send you things that will work for you. And I need to trust that you're going to follow through and not waste my time along with yours. Okay. So let's, give this person an operative name. Let's like, let's create a fictitious character. And it could be someone that you know, but give this individual a name. Well, let's just go with John. <laughs> John, okay. That's really creative. <laughs> That's my um, graphic name. <laughs> Not creative at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so John is detail-oriented. He's very upfront, honest, he's decisive. He wants to trust you. You want to trust him. No BS between you guys. Not into wasting anyone's time. That's perfect. So approximately how old is John? Um, let's go with 30. Okay. Does he own his own home? I would hope so at this point. Okay. So he's looking to kind of buy at least his second property. Yes. Okay. Um, why does he want to start investing? Um, that's a great question. I would something along the lines of freeing yourself up from being forced into a job that you don't want, chasing a paycheck, you know, the opportunities and the freedoms that ownership brings. Right. Uh, does he have a family? Yeah, why not? Kids? Yes. How many kids? Two. <laughs> Two kids. Do they come into the, is it like when you're talking about his why? 
right? You mentioned about having financial freedom, that kind of fallback where he's building his own net worth. Um, does his family kind of come into that as well? Yes, it would. So wants to kind of secure their financial future. Okay. Let's talk about, I'm going to get pretty random right now and then I'll bring it in afterwards. Let's talk about on an average Sunday afternoon. What is John doing? Let's see. Um, I don't know. Quality time with the family, sprinkle in a little bit of work, looking at what changes in the market are happening. Um, maybe driving by or not necessarily focus on work, but in the back of his mind, you know, it's always there when you're running to the grocery store and you see an open house, maybe he turns off to stop or, you know, you're driving somewhere else and you're taking notes of the homes that are available for you. Just a mental note that you can go back and look into. Not somebody that's solely focused on eating and breathing real estate, but, you know, realizes that opportunities are out there and just a mental note to check back in. Okay, perfect. So professionally speaking, what does he do? Professionally speaking, um... I haven't put much thought into that. I don't know. Probably some other sorts of investments, maybe sales. Okay. Like sales or like finances, maybe like he, he's kind of a white collar. Yeah, like advisory, maybe financial advising. Um... Okay. Let me explain to you why I'm asking these questions, right? It might seem a little bit random. In order to get the attention of John, we need to meet John where he's at. When John's at work, we're, we're competing with too much to get his attention, right? So John, so let's say he's a financial advisor. He's working with clients. He's doing this. He's, we can't get him then. Question is, where can we get him and when can we get him? We can get him on a Sunday afternoon. When are we able to get him? In the times in between quality time with his family. What type of information is he looking for? He is looking for real estate investing, but he's also, because family is very important to him, that's also something that he is looking for information on. So like, let's say hypothetically, a great new restaurant that has awesome reviews in the area that he could take his family to that everybody would love. Like he might, I'm not saying that this is what you should do, but just to understand that's something he might be interested in because obviously looking at John, I'm not going to write a report about a, an awesome, sweet, new, trendy spot in the city. Like, I don't know, maybe you would, but to understand the type of information that he's interested in and what I'm looking at this right now and I'm seeing his why is family. And so when you're talking about things, right, like you mentioned, when you were doing your expired cold call calling, you're not just talking about what's important to you. You're recognizing what's important to them. How do you know what's important to them? You ask him. Very simple. Are you looking to move closer to your kids? Like, why is it that you were even selling? That's basically what we're doing here. So marketing is basically just about getting into the conversation that they're already having in their heads. So John is always thinking, how do I start building my own portfolio, securing my own financial future for the sake of my family? And so when you're, for example, writing a report or writing five creative ways of securing your financial future, you can either write five ways to make more money, or you can say five ways to guarantee your your family's financial freedom for generations to come. That resonates more with them. So understanding the why is really important. Now, the other thing that you mentioned that was really important is that on some of the off time that he has on those Sundays, he is looking at content. So it's not like we need to create a whole bunch of really like dry content. It's, it, he doesn't stop thinking about it. So there are moments on those Sundays that we can reach him on these quote unquote guilty pleasure platforms like Instagram. I don't know. Maybe he's young enough to do TikTok. I'm not sure, but I personally don't use TikTok. You can if you want. But the point is understanding where John is and understanding when he's interested in your content. So John is the type of fellow, it seems like, that you don't have to be creating a bunch of roundabout content about fun places in your area and then sprinkle in some real estate into there. He doesn't care about that. Let's cut the crap. Just get down to it. I know for me, on a Sunday afternoon when I'm chilling watching TV with my wife or what, I shouldn't say I'm watching TV with my wife on a Sunday afternoon. I've got two kids and one on the way. That's not happening. <laughs> on a Sunday night, let's say, if I'm watching a movie with my wife and I'm on my phone in the meantime watching reels, I'm watching entrepreneurs talk about different things that they've done to help them succeed. That is engaging to me. 
And so while most people, let's say, who are dealing with another kind of investor who like are maybe passive about it, they can talk about local trendy spots, whatever it is. You don't have to do that. I think for you, your focus can be real estate slash financial related content that they are genuinely interested in. And so it becomes really simple now because he enjoys this stuff. You can then really, it's like the more, the better. I mean, if you had a podcast, a YouTube channel, Instagram reels, everything that you can possibly think of, he's going to watch all of it because he's on all of those platforms. And when he's just having a good time, just relaxing by himself, just chilling, he will be watching videos about how to invest in real estate. You know what I mean? Makes sense. Yeah. So I feel like people, a lot of the time, I mean, I do believe in the 80, 20 rule in everything. I believe that usually speaking, people should sprinkle a lot of their own personal life and then sprinkle some real estate. in. I don't think you have to do it with, with John, like Alex Hormozzi. I don't really care to know about what Alex Hormozzi is doing on a Sunday afternoon. I want to know how Alex Hormozzi made hundreds of millions of dollars. That's what I want to know. John <laughs> is the same as you. Or sorry. John is the same as me. John is the same as you also. Like yeah. he just wants to know what's happening in real estate. So, I want to kind of let you know internally what I do, my strategy to create content, how I have such an easy time creating content. And I think that the strategy could be the same for you. It's just figuring out how to actually get to the step. Yes. My strategy to create content essentially revolves around this podcast right here. I'm all about working smarter instead of harder. So I found that I was doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching calls. And then I was also on a separate note, speaking to successful individuals about their business asking them their stories. It's very engaging, very good podcast as well. I realized, first off, I enjoy doing this more, what I'm doing right now. I'm already spending the time anyway. Why don't I just leverage that time better? So now I do what I already was doing. I turn it into a podcast. I take the video. I turn it into a YouTube video. So now I've got podcast and YouTube video with this with a 45-minute episode. I send it off to my video editor, who will then... Sorry. I send it off to my video editor who then takes a video that we're creating, for example, right now, clip it up into seven smaller sections. And then I have an Instagram reel going out every single week. None of it's about me and my family going swimming on a Sunday afternoon. It's all about how to succeed, how to keep, how to get better at real estate. And this is how you can really minimize the input, maximize the output. And then the more you do this, the more of an authority you become. So usually when it comes to creating content, I'm very big into creating categories of content to talk about i think you could do that i don't think you have to. i'm looking for that sorry i said i don't think i'm looking for who that would attract yeah I, I don't think you have to do that i think i would actually create something pretty similar and and let me ask you this then first off how open are you to creating content like this in a way that works for you but like this you know, that was one of my goals to get started for the new year. I have very, very minimal social media presence as it is. Okay. So what about like a podcast, YouTube, any of those kind of resonating with you? A podcast would be great. And who would you interview on your podcast? Probably other agents. You know, one big thing that I kind of sat down and started planning a calendar for was just talking to other agents and doing market comparisons based off of what they have available, what we have available, what kind of returns those provide. Uh, and, you know, it also always helps to have referral agents. So, you know, two birds, one stone, meeting new people that might have some business to send my way and vice versa. So I like two birds with one stone, but I'm going to give a different angle on this. Okay. Maybe instead of interviewing other realtors, you can interview successful investors in your area. And ask them about their story. Because let's face it. If you were to go over to a successful investor and say, I'd love to grab a cup of coffee with you. I'd love to pick your brain. No, thanks. I'm busy. <laughs> When's the last time this person was asked to come onto the show to talk about how successful and wonderful they are? It well, it's funny that you mentioned that. I was following, a, um, it was on Facebook, actually. You know, they have tons of different investor groups. And I kept seeing posts from one person. Um, their name on Facebook is the Wolf of Wholesaling or something to that nature. And I actually messaged him on Facebook. I'm like, you know, you're one of the first people I've seen with a genuine and realistic framing for wholesaling deals because that's the new hot trend that everybody wants to jump on right now. Do you have some time in January to sit down and 
you know, tell me about yourself. Tell me about your strategy and how you came up with that. And he was very receptive, said, absolutely, let's get it on the calendar. There was no pushback at all. Exa yeah, honestly, exactly. And imagine even if, take it to another level, like not only are you asking them to put it on the calendar, but you're asking them to come onto your podcast to talk about it. Like it just sweetens the pot so much more. It's a new opportunity. And now you're building, you can get anyone. You can get realtors, successful realtors on your show and build your network like there. You can get investors, which could be your clientele onto the show. And you know, John's interested in that because all John cares about is I want to know what did those successful people do and how can I do that? And so you get those successful people. You bring them to John's stereo in his car while he's driving wherever he's driving to. And you, he just puts it onto the podcast and he listens for 45 minutes while you talk to one of the most successful investors in his area and talks about how he got started when he was 30 years old by doing this one simple trick. And now look at him. Now he's a mega multimillionaire. So you're attracting John. You're building connections with some of the biggest real estate investors in your area. And you're creating content all at the same time. Sounds like a win to me. Yeah. Does this strategy seem like something that not only is leverageable and possible for you to do, but also makes you excited? Absolutely. So there's so many different channels that you can start promoting this on. So a lot of the time people say like, I don't know how to send out an email every single week. What am I supposed to write about? Think of new content every week? Like, no. You write a small paragraph about the email, about the podcast episode that came out this week. You have a link to your podcast. That's it. And then you promote your audience. And every time you promote your audience, the beginning of every single podcast episode, just like when I said, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Real Marketer Podcast. At the end of this episode, I will also be saying, if you want to leverage a three-part scale engine, then go to these links. And people hear this and they say, wow, that sounds awesome. I want that in my business. They'll click on the link. They'll generate business. And then that's how you start to scale this. Because as your audience grows, your business grows. So this is really what I would do. This is how I see the opportunities. Because by creating a podcast... You now have a YouTube channel. You have a podcast. You send it over to a video editor on Fiverr. I've got some great people I've used in the past. Literally, I mean, you could, some of these guys charge like $10, $15 a video and are certainly good enough to break it up into Instagram reels. Yeah. Right? So now you've got your social media taken care of. Like I said, YouTube podcast as well. You've got an email marketing strategy where every week all you have to do is basically copy and paste the podcast slash YouTube description, put that into your email, have a link at the bottom saying, listen now, and then... At the, at the footer of your actual email, have a template where it says, if you're interested in learning how you can leverage some of the strategies that you hear on this podcast, book a time to talk with me. And now all of these channels are just being recycled into each other. And the more you do, the more your audience grows. And the second you have a podcast, you're an immediate authority. And that for me is the best opportunity to sort of quote unquote, hack the system and just create as much output as possible with as minimal input as possible. Yeah, you know, I think um, after talking to you, what I kind of realized is that we focus so much on, oh, this is going to be so hard. How do you build an audience? How do you get there? And when you break it down into smaller steps and, you know, you can use one video for all these different things, it's much easier and a lot less daunting than looking at it as trying to already be established in that thousand followers or whatever your goal is. You know, you put it into much more manageable perspective. Exactly. And like, just to kind of add another thing to that is I've, I'm scheduling podcasts now for the next few months out. Like this podcast, if you're listening to this right now on Spotify, like this podcast was recorded, recorded a couple or a few months ago because I've just done my episode. So I don't have to worry about that. And I mean, the process is just so dialed in and that's how, and again, talking from somebody that really puts a lot of emphasis on working smarter instead of harder. That's how I can maximize my output to such an extent with a minimum input in a way that's rewarding for me. I love doing this. I love doing this. And it sounds like you love the no BS sort of approach. Let me just talk to somebody who's done it. I'm not interested in the flash, the panache. Just give me somebody who's done it. Let me talk to them. I'm going to pick their brain. And this way you can do that and, and kind of attach all of these other platforms to that. So just kind of want to ask you the big question at the end of the day is, do you feel like the strategy is something that, like I mentioned, um, something that is exciting for you? You said it's exciting. It's also leverageable. Do you feel like this is the next big opportunity to help you scale your business? Of course. And I'll do you one better. I feel that so much so that as soon as we jump off this podcast, I'm going to go share it with my team and say, all of you need to schedule an appointment and do this exact same thing. 
Awesome. Okay, I love that. So all the strategies, all of the strategies and ideas discussed in this episode were made possible by Innobox and the Scale Engine Framework. If you'd like to learn more about how you can scale your real estate business to the next level, you might want to check out Innobox. It's a coaching program and a CRM designed exclusively for realtors. Our team of experienced professionals and coaches will guide you through a proven three-part scale engine framework to help you scale your business and achieve success, just like you heard on today's episode. In a box includes one-on-one -on -one coaching, access to a private community of like-minded realtors, a variety of resources and tools to help you scale your business, the complete three-part scale engine blueprint for you to follow at your own leisure, one of the most comprehensive and simple to use CRMs and the market and way more. Don't let your competition get ahead, guys. If you're ready to scale, then now is the time to invest in yourself and your business within a box. So go to goinabox.com to learn more and to sign up today. And if you'd like to learn how you can apply to be a guest on the show, just send an email to oliver at goinabox.com and let me know why you think you'd be a good fit. So Carly, what a pleasure it has been. And uh, I'm looking forward to watching you from the sidelines, implement these strategies and scale your business.